Well, the way we use Twitter is to engage with our community, to um, give them access in the first point to what we're doing, what we're about, so they can share our values, understand what we do, why we do it, how we do it. The thing that works really well for me as a chef who also writes is being able to communicate directly with people who are cooking my recipes. So sometimes I'll get people tweeting saying, hey, I made this, it didn't quite work out what was wrong with it. And that's really interesting because then I can engage and find out what happened and I can make my recipes of a better quality. Primarily we use it to engage with our customers, you know, to gain feedback, whether it's good or bad. And I think it's very important that people see that there's a face and a person connected to the brand, that it's not just a huge brand rolling out a thousand covers a day, but there's actually people, individuals, personalities working very hard to make that happen. For an independent restaurant, when you can be making changes really quickly, you know, this week, for instance, there's a guy on Twitter called Marky Market who tweeted us saying he had some wild garlic. He came in at two o'clock with wild garlic. It was on the menu at six o'clock. And using it for things like that, really instant ways of communicating with people who are going to come and eat with you. Absolutely. It keeps you really fleet foot. And you can, you know, new, new producers can come on, new little initiatives. We did an Aperol Fool's Day on the 1st of April. And you know, it was all literally dreamed up and promoted all through Twitter yeah. within 24 hours. signed up and straight away um, suddenly had a whole lot of friends, um, people who talked about things that I was interested in and it gave me this power of finding stuff out but also telling people what we were doing. I think we had this amazing wow moment when we had a rather heated debate with Lloyd Grossman about Aperol and what <laughs> kind of olive you're allowed to serve with it and it was just this amazing thing of like, hang on a minute, I'm just a little n nothing restaurant that's on Twitter having a massive debate with kind of one of the, uh, one of my food heroes, I guess. I think it's when we worked out that you could search for a hashtag or a, or a handle, you know, whether it's what people are saying about the restaurant or the food or the service or anything. And it's kind of like listening into someone's conversation. You know, you can, what, what people wouldn't normally tell you face to face or to their waiter, you know, they'll talk about it on Twitter. I think it was when I identified the difference between a tweet and an email and that sort of lack of formality in the conversation that you can have over Twitter. In terms of what works really well is the rapid pace of communication, you know, the, the amount of um, conversations that you can dip into um, and exchange lots of information really quickly. You can find stuff out, you can, you know, I've used it to find a new extractor fan when I stopped working in sort of inside 12 hours. I've used it to sell events within sort of 24 hours. I use it to um, really, really help people understand what I think is distinctive about what we do. I think it's engaging with people primarily and you know you're sitting in an office it's 11 a.m. you're hungry and someone posts a picture of the special of the day or, or an upcoming dish and it gets people talking. The other thing I think works really well for restaurants I think especially in an area like Soho where we are it's really um, collaboration driven yes. and so the fact that you can be in touch with other restaurants in the area and do collaborations and team up and it's just a really great way to communicate with other restaurants in the business as well. Absolutely I think that's exactly it we're kind of looking to set up a uh, collaborative evening with Barafino and it's all happened through Twitter and you know, we're going to share ovens and they're going to come and do some pizza stuff and we're going to come and go and do some kind of more seafood stuff and it's going to be great and yeah it's all come about through us mutually being on Twitter. Top two tips for using Twitter as a restaurant is getting people's opinion I think you know you can be asking people you can really get an opinion on whether people like anchovies or not, that's, that's the one that always sticks in my head. To actually use it, you know, a lot of places have a Twitter account and it's either sort of stagnant or, or they don't actually, you know, keep it fresh and up to date. Be helpful, share content that is not just about you, that's about other people and that is interesting for everyone. I think the best way is to just use it for what it is and that's a way to connect with people, share what you're doing and, uh, you know, use it for feedback. The most important thing, I think, to be successful on Twitter is to have someone empowered to have a personality. You can't hide who you are in a conversation. You know, on Twitter, who you are is gonna come out. So if you're expressing who you are well, um, then it's engaging. If you're anodyne, it's boring. And I think the picture thing, this is such a visual 
industry. At the moment, I think pictures. They're the ones that gain the most uh, interaction and retweets. A great restaurant food tweet comes with a picture, I think, in terms of just selling the food aspect of it. People like to see what you're talking about. It's all good and well describing a dish. But when people can see it, they can really connect with it. You're going to tweet a photograph. You're putting something about your restaurant that you really care about out into the world. Just make sure it looks nice. So I like a, I like a food picture tweet. Um, but also, I like something funny. Thank you.